everyone, happy new year and welcome to Codemy 2018. So in this video right here, I'm gonna be giving you guys an update of what it is we're gonna be uh, covering in 2018. Also a bit of a, a retrospective uh, on what we have actually achieved in uh, 2017. So in 2017, we focus a lot on, you know, delivering a lot of uh, really useful content. You know, we've been getting a lot of good feedback on the content, we can, getting a lot of feedback on our site. And, you know, all the all those feedbacks are uh, being accumulated and uh, prepared for our launch for the new version of the site, which is coming up very, very soon. And we've been working working very hard on that. Um, and it's, uh, it's coming really, really soon, I promise. There's a lot of... Uh, things behind the scene that's going on. So we're not just working on the new UI, but we're working on the back end. So as you can see here, this is the new back end of the content creation stuff. So we can actually upload the video from here. Uh, so the idea is that, um, you know, I'll be basically managing the entire operation of everything uh, from here, all the way from content creation, like uploading my source video, uh, editing the actual content with the, with the code editor and the content editor over here uh, with code highlighting and all that stuff. Uh, so obviously this is a work in progress. It's not correctly working uh, just yet, but it's coming along. Uh, as you can see here, everything looks really nice. Um, so once everything is working, you know, we'll have a really amazing tool to put out really great content for you guys. I also want to uh, talk a little bit about the, the three uh, main things we're going to be focusing in 2018. So I want to start off with talking a little bit about Rails. So Rails has come a really, really long way. Uh, and you know that we have a project in Rails and I have uh, I work with clients on a Rails project. Uh, so if you want to check out uh, our, um, our Rails API series, uh, go ahead uh, over to uh, github.com slash codemy uh, invoiced. And basically, this is the Rails project we're going to be continuing to develop. Uh, this is an API only Rails app. And basically, we're going to cover everything. We're going to go into JSON uh, web tokens, JWT, yeah, for those of you who don't know about it. Um, so we're going to shift over to doing a real JSON web token. Uh, we've, we've heard your feedback, you know, a lot of people have been requesting it. Uh, so we're going to do it this year. Uh, Rails, uh, you know, has uh, come up with uh, Stimulus as well. So Stimulus is the JavaScript framework that goes with Rails. Um, we're going to touch on that, but we're not going to be uh, digging deep into or building a full app with it. We'll touch on it and show you guys how it works. Um, but we're not going to go really, really deep. So our main focus uh, is in React in terms of the front end. And I'll tell you a little bit why, uh, you know, React, uh, why we're continuing the journey with React this year. Uh, so the other thing I want to talk about is um, the code base for the new uh, Codemy site. It's all in Elixir. So I've been playing with Elixir um, for a while, uh, but now, you know, I've created the whole new site, uh, the back end and the API, everything is now being built in Elixir. And the reason why is because Elixir is an amazing, amazing technology. Um, you know, once I dig into it into my channel, you guys are going to see clearly why Elixir is really, really uh, an amazing piece of technology. So where does that put Rails? So is it either or? Uh, do we go with Elixir or do we go with Rails or do we go with... Uh, so Elixir has a web framework called Phoenix. So if I use the word Phoenix, I mean it's uh, I mean Elixir uh, as well. So Elixir is a programming language like Ruby, and uh, Rails is the framework, and uh, the counterpart in uh, Elixir is Phoenix. So Rails, Phoenix, uh, Ruby, Elixir, and essentially uh, Elixir is a functional programming language, and it supports concurrency out of the box. It has all these cool features that uh, Ruby is lacking. Not to say that Ruby uh, is is not good or anything. Ruby is amazing, right? Uh, I still love working with Ruby. I still love working with Rails. And Rails and Ruby is still definitely the best choice uh, for a lot of cases, but there are some cases where Phoenix and Elixir is a better fit. Um, you know, if you have a highly concurrent problem that you need to solve, Elixir and Phoenix is the way to go. Um, so uh, basically, uh, you know, I'll, I'll start off, um, you know, building a, a basic project with Elixir this year. Uh, and the reason why we're covering Elixir this year and not previous years, because the rule at Codemy is that, you know, whatever it is, technology that we research, it has to be put into production. So this year, as soon as our, uh, you know, new site goes uh, live, uh, we have a major Elixir app go into production uh, and you know it means that I've covered everything in terms of all the concepts like the syntax, the language, 
uh, the concept of concurrency, the actor model, um, and uh, everything in between all that, like OTP and how it all works and how do we manage projects, how do we do testing, um, how do we generate projects and you know everything you want to know uh, in building a backend, an API backend with uh, Elixir, how to do background jobs and you know what are the difference between Rails and uh, and and Phoenix and uh, the difference between uh, Ruby and Elixir? They're both great technologies. So uh, I don't want you guys to get into the idea that oh hey I'm gonna go with Elixir now and then I'm gonna go with Rails and gonna... you don't have to pick one. Uh, you know I think pick the best technology for the job, but you as a developer you need to know a lot of tools. You know I and mean, you need to know a lot of tools well. Well at, at least I think that you should know a lot of tools. You can stick with one tools and and stick with one tool and and really you know master that and and really dig deep into that. That's a great thing as well. Um, but it's also good to explore other avenues and learn from the other avenues. So like my Ruby programming skill has gotten a lot better just because of the fact that you know I have uh, you know dug into Elixir and I learned a lot from writing Elixir, learned a lot of concepts uh, in Elixir that I apply in rail in ruby and then i'm able to write even better code even more beautiful code and then it makes me an even happier developer all right so now that's elixir and rails and ruby and phoenix out of the way let's cover react what's been going on with that um so uh, we have basically doubled down on react we've been building projects left and right uh for clients uh any consulting clients that we're doing um you know we're, we're just doing the same workflow and everything's just been working out really really well like i'm able to really get amazing um and you know going really above and beyond in terms of the user interface and the user experience in terms of building apps with react over the years uh, over the year last year of working with react i really got disheartened at certain points because of the javascript ecosystem but then i realized that if i followed trends um you know things wouldn't go down so well like i would get disheartened you know because things weren't working out the way that i wanted it to so what i decided was i'm going to take matters into my own hand and figure this out so uh, i want to talk a little bit about the routing uh so you know i mentioned to you guys in the previous episodes that um you know i'm not too fond of the react router anymore uh and no negative feedback to the react router community at all like if it works for them great but for me it didn't work it didn't jive well with my philosophy of software so I decided to go a different route, and uh, so I'm. I picked up this router called Router Five. Uh, it's uh, made by a really, really cool guy. This guy here, uh, Thomas Roche, um, he created uh, Router Five, and basically, uh, you know, this router really jives well with what I'm trying to uh, achieve. What I really want from a router. Uh, as a as a React developer, it completely separates the router layer from your application, and and that's really clean. And uh, what I have done is basically, you know, I've taken everything that I've learned from 2017, and I'm I've, I've taken out things I don't like, and I've added things that I do like, and to create this um, this workflow uh, with React. So I don't want to start by saying that I'm developing a, a framework, but just to give you guys a head start. So those of you who have been following along, who want to have a head start on what's coming in 2018, check out this repository right here, Fronto.js template. So this is a starter template. It's going to be what we're going to be basing all of our projects on moving forward. And on top of this, we're developing a CLI tool that allows you to generate projects like much like Rails. And um, over the time, I'm also going to be introducing design patterns that I've discovered by using the React, uh, using the router five with React. Um, and I'm also going to talk about uh, MobX, how MobX integrates with this router um, and, and and React itself, of course. Uh, so this is now based on React 16. So everything has been upgraded. Everything has been refreshed. So from here on, we're using MobX with Router 5. And the result that I have been getting has been amazing for, for uh, what we want to do, for our clients and for the students who are on Codemy and, uh, you know, the, the, the experience that we, uh, that I've been able to craft with this workflow, with this tool set has been very impressive, at least for me. Uh, so I can't speak for anybody else. I can only speak for Codemy and, uh, our intellectual, our company and, uh, our clients. So, uh, 2017 has been amazing for us. 2018 is going to be even more amazing. I want to mention that we have a member's uh, uh, section where you can get access to all of our content uh, and you can stay tuned. 
we have a new site coming, uh, as I already mentioned. So uh, I'll show you uh, quickly the video uploading uh, framework. So if I click here, I go to upload source file. Um, you know, I can upload a video, but I'm not going to do that right now because it's going to take forever to download a 300 or 500 megabyte video file. Um, I also wanted to mention that, um, you know, this backend and everything is that I'm building is going to be open source. So by becoming a member, you are supporting all that work. Um, and once everything is more polished, there's more documentation, uh, I'm going to like do a proper official announcement on where you can get access to the source code if you want to build cool projects with Elixir or with Rails or with React. Basically, everything we're doing, we're going to open source. Um, so that's that's the way we roll. Uh, so yeah, uh, if you want to support us, become a member, get access to our content, content, and also know that you are supporting our open source efforts. Uh, we are trying to solve a lot of these problems uh, and making it as impactful as possible for everybody out there. Uh, so yeah, uh, with that, uh, I want to wrap this up and uh, see you guys in the next episode.